And in this episode, the Nordhaven team arrived from LA to inspect their vessel. We start sea trials, and not everything goes perfectly, but that's what sea trials are all about. For some, it was just a pleasant day out on the water. Mark and Renee play with Starlink. And I don't know what this bloke's up to. I hate to think. Captain Rammel tries out her tender and then more sea trials. Enjoy. Yeah. Jake, hang on. Hang on, Dad. Mark, what are you doing up so I early? I don't know. Hey? I'm all right, Dad. Hey. Good grief. How are you guys? Hey, yeah, good to see you. How are you? Yeah, good to see you, eh? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Is gorgeous. Isn't it? Oh, my God. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good, are you happy? It's oh, amazing. Oh, it's so amazing. Fantastic. Ah, it's beyond belief. Yeah, it's Seeing way... your design coming to life. Yeah. So day one of sea trials about to start. We're going to check out the engine with the John Deere specialist. And then around lunchtime we've got the ABT track people coming. But first, Murat wants to make sure his pilot house seat works. Yes. We want it comfortable, eh Murat? Got to be comfortable. Once we have that sorted, we can depart. So as always at these marinas, you get the marina staff come and help you get off the dock because you tail in. And you can see at the front there, you've got a line that goes down to a mooring buoy, which is on the bottom of the marina. So they, they're just fantastic. They come out and give you a hand and uh, shuffle you past the boats on either side which can be pretty tight at times so everybody needs their fenders out but yep here we go on our first sea trial and I must admit I was a little bit sort of wondering exactly what a sea trial is in aid of um, I mean at the end of the day everything's been tested on the boat and the tank so it really comes down to running the engines and John Deere um, are a big part of that part of fitting out marine engines on a boat is then coming, coming and actually commissioning them to check that everything works properly and I mean it's quite a process they've got all sorts of sensors plugged oh, yeah. into the engines, they've got a laptop into that so they can analyse everything that's going on, they're testing the water the whole thing so it is it is quite a process so here we are just leaving the Via Port Marina, there's some beautiful boats around, I mean there's a big um, explorer yacht out there on the left having a bit of a refit and a gorgeous super yacht there it's been oh, I don't know five six days while we've been there the whole time that but so nice um, absolutely there, eh? lovely calm day as we left and go out into the Marmara Sea to just start the sea trials so as I said um, they there to check the engines there out go, um, the PTO one, eh? is on the starboard engine for the stabilizers so um, we've got to check that the stabilizers all work properly and the ABT guy comes on board for that and they actually commission those as well make sure that they're all set up nicely there he is there and Marat driving Marat's the owner of uh, Telgren we've got Mine on board Mine did all the interior design so a little bit of a treat for her coming away on the first trip and here I am going up onto the um, top deck and then through to the flybridge and very shortly you'll see our um, skipper and uh, Hoonkar is his name, I remember it, because um, I think of Hoonie Cars back home, so Hoonkar. And it's been great having him because, I mean, obviously you're dealing with the locals all the time, and he just makes things so much easier. So, sea trials, day one. Now, this is the kind of day we want to leave on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's Flat, true. calm. <clears throat> Can we order flat, calm like this when we go? Yes. <laughs> well, obviously, the whole point of a sea trial is to see if things work out or they don't. And very early on, look at the number of people <laughs> gathered around here. You can see on the overhead panel on the right hand side there the green background lit gauge. It's a John Deere digital gauge on the engine. It's got an amber warning up. Eventually it went through to red, which necessitated a shutdown of the starboard engine. 
So we basically couldn't get much above about a thousand RPM without that coming on. So um, quite a bit of scratching the old head there, trying to work out what the heck was wrong. The guys were down in the engine room having a good look, seeing if they could fathom it out. Um, but unfortunately we weren't able to work it out so a return to via port was um, necessary and um, yeah there's an awful lot of thinking going on um, trying to work out maybe what was different on the starboard as to what was different on the port engine a few ideas there we'll come back to those later but as always coming back into via port is just so nice you know it's a beautiful marina absolutely flat calm in there and i'm watching like a hawk i mean i'm just trying to learn everything because i've never backed a boat in between two other boats onto a marina jetty so i'm watching everything that hoon car does and essentially the concept is you come up to absolutely abeam your position you spin the boat on itself using the bow thruster and offset thrust on either engine. He only had uh, the port engine to work with. And then you back in towards the other two boats, hopefully nicely in the middle. And then they attach the mooring line onto the bow. And then they basically let you back in, get to a point where you're about a metre off the marina. You put the rear lines on and then you just basically fiddle around everything until you're absolutely happy. So once we're on the wharf, we started the engine up again. Um, they tried making some alterations and that, but re never really at that point got to the bottom of what the problem is. But um, as you'll learn a bit later on, we soon were able to work out what it was. So we have just started the starboard engine. If you remember in the last video, we had to shut that down. So we've had John Deere out here all morning working on that engine. And they're happy, so we're happy. We've just started up both engines, and the captain has called up via Port Marina to get the guys on the tender to come and give us assistance to leave. Should be underway soon. been a pretty interesting day really. Um, sea trial number one, um, essentially what they want to check out is obviously that both engines operate well and the starboard engine didn't every time we tried to put power up on it. Uh, we got first an amber warning and then a red warning. So I uh, had to throttle down on that and they've been working on that effectively all day trying all sorts of things. Um, you can plug a computer in, they get a whole lot of diagnostics. There's about four John Deere engineers down in the engine room. Um, they took the fuel line off, checked that, put some um, fuel through it just to make sure it was nice and clear it is. So now the viewers said it's potentially a sensor that is just sensing a problem and therefore not allowing the engine to power up. So Marat, um, the thinker, thought, oh, we've got two engines, why don't we put the good sensor off the port engine on the starboard side? So we've got both engines shut down at the moment. We're about, oh, I reckon a kilometre offshore. Um, nice smooth day though, so it doesn't really matter. And they're just now in the process of swapping over the sensors. And if the port engine now has a problem and the starboard engine works well, then we know what the problem is. Um, also had a problem with the stabiliser today. Effectively, you've got counter-rotating and rotating engine shafts. So one goes clockwise, one goes anti-clockwise. And the pump for a clockwise engine was put on the anti-clockwise spinning engine. So that was never gonna work. So luckily, a whole lot of ABT PTOs at the factory. So they bought one out that's now connected and we can get back to testing that. So the sea trial's 
actually pretty simple. It's about stabilizers, it's about the engines, and it's about steering. Once that's done, um, that's the sea trial over and done with. We'll probably try and see what maximum speed we can get. There's a bit of a bet at the moment as to whether it's going to be 10 knots, and that was Jeff, or 12 knots, which was Marat. Drew was asked what he thought. He hedged his bets and went for 11. So we'll get to determine who wins that little bet. I think dinner's on it, actually. Um, and that'll be the sea trial done, and then it's commissioning. So I finally got to the bottom of what commissioning is. Commissioning is where every single switch, lever, dial, hose pipe connection, water pump, drawer, everything is just operated um, over and over and over again to check that everything is okay for the boat to leave. So uh, that'll be what happens for the next week while we're living on board, which will also be a good test of everything. So there you go, just coming to the end of sea trial day one. And I think that's a success. We found out what wasn't working and we're in the process of rectifying it. That's it. Okay, so sensor swapped over and we're on our way again. Slight complication is the stabilizers work off the starboard engine, so we couldn't test the stabilizers no. either. Same, same problem. And uh, while we're out there, you can see just off to the left, you've got the um, decibel reader there, so the noise monitor, so they're taking readings on that everywhere. Um, and there are the stabilizers there um, in the center of the screen, which we're unable to check. But unfortunately, um, it didn't work. And so it really was back to the drawing board and it's a Friday, so that was the work, all the work done for the weekend, really. We are doing a shopping list. What was the first item on it? Wine. This is it so far. <laughs> wine. Red wine and white wine. Red, Red wine and white wine. Okay, <laughs> that's excellent news. So we've got our healthy apple juice here, look. Freshly squeezed. Pretty neat day today, people. Why is that, Matt? Well, we're going to move on to Awanui NZ. We well, are. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. You nervous? Get to make the beds. You and... nervous or you unsettled? No, I'm unsettled, not nervous. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Nuna? I'm pretty nervous. You're <laughs> nervous? <laughs> yeah. We're well, okay. moving into a very small area. Something's going to go wrong. There's going to be an argument or two. <laughs> I was going to say it's all right. Dad's not taking the boat out, Renee. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There is so much electrical stuff, eh? Hey? Like, but it's okay because at the moment we've been shutting everything right down to just one battery a night. Nice. Whereas from here on in, we basically leave everything plugged in. That makes it easy. It does. Yeah. So we've got the weekend because they want us to just try everything out. So we're going to cook. We're going to use, use the toilet, the shower. Use the washing machine. We're going to use yeah, washing machine and dryer. Yeah. Right, this grocery list is looking really, really healthy. Really sad at the moment. Okay, <laughs> come on then. Right. No, what are you we'll gonna continue with that? You oh, carry on talking to absolutely. your Absolutely. <laughs> Here go our bags. Okay. Leaving the hotel off to the boat. Come on girls. Uh, did you get the headphones from my no. bed this morning? Because yes. Then, yeah? And the other cords? Yeah, yes. Out of what has been a very nice hotel, heading to the boat. Yay! Let's go. How cool is that? So the test we're doing at the moment is all the sea doors to check that they are watertight up to two bar. So the problem we've got is the tap here only has two settings, on and off. And when it's on, it's six bar. So a little bit of water got in, but um, they're just trying to work out how we can drop the pressure down a little bit in order to get it down to two bar. So that's what we're doing. And we have to do that on one, two, three doors. And I'll just check whether it has to go into the lazarette as well. Possibly does, just to make sure you can keep that area dry, because um, a lot of electrical gear down there. Watch this space, eh? Okay, and slight interruption here because the gentleman from Mercury have turned up and they're going to do a wee engine run on the 20 horsepower Mercury tender engine. So that's going to interrupt proceedings, but we'll plug that in and record it. So that means there'll be a bit of petrol in there, a bit of oil in there, and when we come back in on Monday after the sea trial, we can take the tender off the boat and then her ladyship can be in command. How exciting. Plug the hose in. Obviously got to have water going through the engine. 
Light mishap, fix that though. Uh oh. Broken glass on the pressure gauge. Oops. Alright, take it all back. Maybe there is a And back to the water test on the sea doors. So, three sea doors, and what they have to demonstrate for category A approval is that the sea door around its perimeter can take two bar of water pressure no more than 600 mil away from it being sprayed for three minutes around the edge in a reasonable manner whatever reasonable manner means so um, this door failed on a couple of occasions and they've refitted some seals and now it's looking great and there's all the outdoor seating cushions arriving to go on they're velcro and also well, i can't see it here but some of them have little toggle clip-ons. Here we go there. They stay nice and tight. So they're all being passed up on the boat to be fitted to the flybridge and the port deck. What are we doing, Renee? We're going to put Starlink up, so I have to get up here. Okay, so, all right, let's, let's go. take everybody on this journey with us. Right. Onto my shoulder. Okay. Okay, where am I putting this up here? Okay, so what we've got to do. I'm putting it here. On this side of it. Oh, okay. But it, no, it's no, a bit but more it, complicated. Yeah, I know, but it might be that we can put it on that side as well. It depends how long that cord is. So see that, see your stainless steel mast, you feel it. It's it's rocks, that'll take all your weight and more. Yeah, but how, I can't stand on that. No, so you what you do is stand up and lean out there, and hopefully you can see. It's just got a little bit more stressful. Can you see it? No, can you see out there? What? what yeah, the can cord's you... massive. I can get the cord across to this one. Oh, that's fantastic then. All right, go get me Starling and the strop. Okay, so you can get the cord there. Oh, can we bring it down then onto there? Yeah. Oh, we'll put it on the deck. Or on that thing. This cord's majorly long. There might even be a little bit. Just give it a very... Look, I can put it here. Yeah, just give it a very gentle pull out, see if there's any left. You need me to what? Take a photo of me. From down there. Oh, okay, stand by. Where's your phone? Just there. Okay, hang on. Going off here. Off here, okay. off here now. Yeah. Okay, so Renee says there is enough cord up there for us to here. put it on the top of the mast. roll bar. Mast, what we call a mast. So I'll give Renee the Starlink. And there's a there's that? a form on the front of it. It sort of shows what to do, Renee. But it's pretty obvious, I think. You basically plug it in and go. Yeah, but do I want to put this down? And just like, like I think so. The only thing is it says you should have good angle to the sky and the radar might get in front of it, eh? But is it a good sunbathing spot up there? It is. I was actually thinking that maybe I should, this could be my little spot. It's good views as well. I can see everything. Can you? Yeah. You, um, you could get a... Show everybody. What your views like up there here? Oh, oh, give me that, and I can look at that for you. Okay. Here you go. Here's the view, team. <laughs> Here's the view. Kidding. Don't worry. Um, here we go. Look at that. Whole marina. And now this way. Oh, that sun's quite bright. Look at that. Into the port. The Via Port Marina. Shopping. It's pretty good. Right, back to that horrible view. Oh. Okay, so, I mean, essentially it's a very, very complicated process now that I've looked at it. In the middle of the thing there, you'll see a receptacle to accept the plug that you have in your hand. Stick it in it, and the job is done. That's uh, plugged in. Okay. Alright, so now it's got to turn it over. <laughs> so just pointing out to our watchers that this is absolutely a temporary fix just to get us internet to get movies out to you because eventually there is a fitting being made at the moment that's going to go on there that this is going to click onto. Yeah, that's perfect, Renee. Right, so hold that there. You? Dad? You holding it? I've got it. So I can move it closer? No, no, that's oh. on me. You're oh. like trying to push me off the bars. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Trying to push me off the mast. No, I'm not. Okay, so 
now we are threading the strop through and dad's yeah there it is dad's connecting it at the other side my job is sort of done now because i don't understand how to operate these things you don't think we should put this down through here across and over that side and then under across where this so like over here down and around over here and then oh. back in the middle well, so yeah. that it's okay. evenly I, I hear you i'm just nervous about getting it too tight that's all no but just so it's evenly stropped because at the okay. moment it's like very only stropped okay, on the left hand here. yeah and back over Through there. there yeah i don't know if i can i can't really see this yeah do you see what i so mean i was determined to have the nicest Starlink fitting yet on a boat. This is it. I reckon this is pretty nice. You think? Yeah. Nice and blue, matches the ocean, matches the sky. Okay, that's pretty tight on this side. And it's pretty loose on this side. But I mean, that's not going anywhere. No, it's not, because it can't. I'll just give it one more. <clears throat> Make that too. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, you feel you're happy with that? Yes. Yeah, okay, so let's just put this up here. I think the first thing that we do now is go and test it, don't you? I don't really want to hurt you. You won't. You're a bit old. You won't. Oh god. Oh. Okay, so while we've been doing this, we've been filling the water up in the water tank, and I suspect when we get down there, we'll find it overflowing. No, it's not. It's not overflowing. So we can get past before the water comes out of the tank. Oh, do you have my phone? I took it down. Cool. You could probably go out and turn the water off if you wanted to, Renee. Okay. Before going in. And we had to use the one next door because for some reason when we turn the valve show them renee put the valve on on our side no water but that's all right our neighbors have water mission successful sweetie good well then you can come in here and sort this out because well, i've got no power yeah, no, ah we've tripped the power yeah the washing machine's not working ah okay the so stop the fuses i've checked on the fuse board the fuses are all fine so you were doing what I was here, I boiled the jug, I just poured the jug into here because we've got no hot water on the tap and then I went to go and boil another jug and then it wouldn't go on but in the meantime I'd heard something then I went out to So tell what you. did you hear, a click? Yeah, just like a gaboom Cl oh, oh, a gaboom Well, no, it wasn't big but it was just It was a gaboom though It was a sound Renee, we've, we've heard, we heard a gaboom And then I went out to let you know but you were busy trying Fitting to Starling. kill our daughter Right. So then I came back and went down into the pilot, and not in the pilot house, into the engine room, checked the fuse boxes, and uh, the washing machine wasn't working, it had finished, stopped working, and I can't see any Okay, fuses. right. Renee? No, it's beyond my pay grade. We're looking for a gaboom. Oh, where are you? Oh, okay. Renee's abandoned ship to the toilet. And Mark is in here looking for a gaboom. So there's the water pump going, so it's definitely not that. And Mrs. R is right, nothing has tripped over there. Oh, hang on. Mrs. R has done some further investigating. AC voltage and AC current is sitting on zero. That can't be right. Ah, yes. Mrs. R, let's have a look at this. Yep, we have lost. That's interesting. We don't have 230 volts. Well found out, Mrs. Rammel. Yes, I know. Not just a pretty face. No, you've done really well. Yeah, okay. Use of that time. Okay, so. That was what the gaboom looked like. That's what the gaboom was. So, are we not on shore power again? I would say so. <laughs> All right. So, the first thing is we've lost power, and we don't know why, but we have another form of power which is the generator. generator. Nice one. <laughs> and for some reason, 
that's not turning off. I mean, I could just ring Nuri, but that would be giving in, wouldn't it? No, ring Nuri. You're not mucking around with stuff, Mark. Oh, I'm okay. Told. Hang on. The pants have spoken. <laughs> I'm getting a bit of a directive here from Captain of the Tender, I might add. Not Captain of the Vessel, Captain of the Tender. Sorry, who? What? Do we are we upset? We can't get a cup of tea. Yeah, no, I just asked all of us. She said, "Can you put the jug on so we can have a cup of tea?" Okay, no, Renee. Wait, what do you think the issue is there? <laughs> well, we don't have power. Did you bump your head when you're up on the mast? Well, we don't have power, but that's interesting because we shouldn't actually lose power because we have full we have voltage on. on, and we've got voltage on the battery. So there are anyway, on. look, we're going to we, okay, okay, we're going to go off air. And I'm going to do so some further investigation. On, okay, so you can probably hear if you listen, that's the generator running. So we have got to the bottom of the problem. And you can see here now. Who got to the bottom of the problem, sorry? We have, we did. We've Who? Got, you did? No. Mum did? No. Dad did? No. Nuri did? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> we've got 230 volts. Um, of AC power back on board and we made an assumption that we'd need to start the generator but we couldn't start the generator so I went down into the engine room and with a bit of help from Nuri from Telgrim we worked out how to get the generator going oops I'll get rid of the hand there you don't want to look at that all the time and um, voila we have power so what's happening Renee? Um, well We've since learned that Starlink is not available in Turkey because the president has said that he will not allow Starlink unless Elon Musk agrees to build a Tesla factory here. So we now have to take it down. Okay. After all the effort putting right, it up. You take that. Me take Starlink. Okay, hello Starlink. Welcome. Look after him. Anyway, that was our Starlink adventure. And um no, we're going to have to go through it all again in Greek waters, where we can like. get the global service, huh? Doesn't look like there's a weather seal on Okay. Alright. Job done. Or undone. Whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> See you, Renee. Bye. Right, so here we are. Monday morning. First thing the guys turn up with are the stainless steel barriers that go on the back of the swim deck. Really gives you the feeling that you've got a slightly bigger area to work with because you've got something between you and the water and we're going to see trials day two now the neat thing here is over the weekend they did some real thinking and Moretz came up with a solution as per usual and he said what's different about the starboard engine and there are two things one is the PTO for the stabilizers well that had nothing to do with the warning light but the second thing was is that because both the engines sit the way they do it meant that the fuel filter was on the starboard side of the starboard engine right over by the hull. And that made it almost inaccessible. So they'd used a kit, a modification kit, to put it over on the left-hand side. And what they basically did was took that kit out and voila, the engines ran absolutely perfectly. So cut a long story short, they've replaced the kit everything now goes beautifully so today what we've basically got down to is increasing the rpm just steadily as you go all the way up to maximum power taking note of what the temperatures do the pressures do the john deere guys were all plugged in with their laptop and so there really was quite a neat feeling on board the boat and finally we were in a position to check out the stabilizers and man do they work i mean Last week we were doing really tight turns at full throttle and the boat just leans over. Whereas now you can go absolutely full throttle, you go around a corner and it keeps the boat dead flat. It doesn't lean into the turn whatsoever or out of the turn I should say. It tries to lean out as you go around really fast. So you can see from these videos just how level the boat stays even though that's going into a pretty tight turn at absolutely maximum power so that's running at about 2400 rpm we're doing 10 and a half to 11 knots and quite a plume out the back as you can see really disturbed water 
Nordhaven's are fairly high, so it's trying to sort of fall out of a turn, if you like, but it stays absolutely level. And honestly, you can just so tell the difference between that and when um, the stabilizers aren't on. So Marat would go to the starboard, to the port, full circle, and then cross over the wake. And you can see there the boat hardly swaying from left or right as we cross the wake. So all in all, it's been a fantastic day. We had to test the swim ladder though. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Take your socks off. <laughs> oh my god. Tummy in? Yeah, looking. Okay, it's official, right? Yeah. I'm going to have the first swim off Awanui NZ. Woo! Woo! <laughs> How is it? Let's go! <laughs> oh my goodness! You're ridiculous! <laughs> okay, we got the ladder. <laughs> the ladder works. Woo! <laughs> That's beautiful. You coming in, Renee? No. Hurry up. Okay, and now comes the next obstacle. So you can see the laptop there and all the data pickup points on the engine and basically it failed the test of back pressure for the exhaust. So it's a wet exhaust, cold seawater comes in, gets mixed with the exhaust and then goes into a baffle and goes out of the exhaust pipe at the back of the boat. Now, too much water was coming in essentially and that meant that the exhaust couldn't get out so there was back pressure back into the engine and that meant that John Deere would not open up the warranty on the engines. They found a solution, really simple, they have to just reduce the flow of seawater into the engine through the seacock. So wedges have been put in and they've cut back the water flow to the point where you've got the right amount of water, the right amount of exhaust and so we've got the tick in the box, Awanui, from an engine perspective, is cleared to go. Okay, and there's the crane. Now the big thing is, it says on here, no 360 degree turn. If you go right round, yeah. it starts twisting the hydraulics. Okay. So the idea is always just to go out there and back, and back here. Right. So it's pretty self-intuitive, so you turn it on first. Fiona's learning how to operate the davit. Captain. Captain Rammel Rammel is learning how to operate the davit. And go up, isn't it? Oh, look at Captain Ramel go. So you need to, if you want me to do anything, let me know. Oh. It is so quiet. It is, eh? Yeah. Yes, please. I really do feel you should have a captain's hat on. <laughs> I'll buy me one. Okay, I'm going to. Beautiful work, Mum. Well done. You clear of that other boat? Yeah. <laughs> do you think so? I don't know if you are. I don't Careful. have enough room down here, but you told me we need to do. Do you want me to go down the bottom now? Yeah, I'm going to go down the bottom. Yeah, but it's not going to fit between these boats. Oh, okay. Can I just say something on film? Yeah. When we started this, and I'm the captain of the tender, <laughs> I was not happy to release it down here because I looked down and I saw there was not enough room. But you know what happened? I got told, it'll be alright, it'll be alright. So I'm really worrying him now that what does it mean being captain of the tender <sighs> when I can't even make the decision on whether I'm going to put it down you there can, or not. You can because if you're, if you're not happy, because the simple thing is... I'm not happy, I think we should bring it back up. There was not enough room to put the tender down. But I can, I can get you enough room. Yeah, then we have the tender up, right, as captain of the tender, I would like the tender back on the boat, then we get enough room, and then we will put it down. Okay, can I just, can I make a suggestion to the captain of the tender? Yeah, that's much better now. Okay, thank you. The, the tender is perfectly happy on the crane, just sitting there. So there's no, it's, it doesn't go anywhere, it's, it's hydraulic, all right? Yes. So there's plenty of strength. And what I'll do is just, I will now go about for the captain, moving the boat over ever so slightly. How are you going to do that? I'm just going to release, release this. a little bit of rope out. 
And on the side. Can go out. Okay. Just come in ever so slightly. There, there we go. go. You are never going to have such a tight spot to come down in. No, trust you to make the first time always difficult. There we go. Oh, yeah. keep going until there's like slack in this. Yeah, perfect. Both is fine. Perfect. Looking good, Captain Rammel. Thank you. Right, Dad. Other Captain Rammel. It's going to get a bit confusing. We're going to need. Oh! What's happening? He took you. the dipstick out and now he can't find where to put it back on. The, the oil? <laughs> yeah, the oil dipstick. Oh, but it's so tempting to just push him or like <laughs> shake the boat. Hey? It was up the top bit. On the left. The, the engine's right, but my. You might be here for a few days. <laughs> All right, let me help. No, stop. Yeah, well, I've got the best eyes out of the three of us. <laughs> I think you're the bravest out Hold of the three Hold on, of Dad. Us. <laughs> You holding on? Yep. Oh shit, I need to come around this way. Mum, take the camera, please. Is it on? Yep. Oh, we're sinking the boat down here. Is that a problem? Oh, Dad? You Mark. Just wait. Well, it might be too late just if we right wait. Just right here. Where? Huh. Here you go. See, that took me all of two minutes. Two seconds, I mean. There you go, Renee. Oops. Just as well you've got your daughter here. Yeah. Too good to be true, they'll start straight away. Yeah. Mm. So, successive uses you just get in and go. Like a car. But no. It's never like that for the Rammels, is it? No. <laughs> Gotta jump through a few hoops first. Yeah. We might have to sit here and have a cup of tea. Uh -huh. You need to say, I'm about to do this, then do it. Because if you had done that, and then I started, I could cut your finger off or something. Okay. Small oh, little no, domestics yeah. happening. Okay. Fair comment. Yeah. Fair co oh. No. Yeah, it's a good one. They had it doing it the other day, yeah. didn't they? Just explain what's just happened. <laughs> well, it wasn't starting, and then Renee came over to have a look. Oh no, we first of all looked around here, and it says read owner's owner's manual. <sighs> and then Dad said, "Well, it shouldn't have to be just between the key and get it started." It also doesn't help because <laughs> it's in Turkish. <laughs> and then Renee looked over here, and she goes, "There is a switch here that says run, run and off." off. And so we've just done off. run now, and we're going to see if that helps. Right here goes. What would you do without your daughter? <laughs> We'd still be sitting there having a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hang on, woo woo, we've got, we're still tired. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need like a little, um, like Renee said, we need a little checklist. Who on earth let you two okay. own a boat? Okay. This is in the three metre ten tender. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right. We're off. Are the ropes released? Rope released. And in the boat, and everyone's sitting down? Yeah, Dad is on this oh, edge, right, yeah. not on the seat. And I'll just go into. What if you go. hit the. We're just going to be careful, eh? Now, you want to avoid the ropes, don't you? Away. That's okay. Oh, we'll just pass them as we pass them. Beautiful. You're just going that way because it's pointing the right way, isn't it? You're so just fine. Into neutral. No, just neutral. neutral. Yeah, that's it. Oh, hello! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome on board. We're off to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to New Zealand. Help yourself to a cup of tea. Yeah. And there's the clava in the fridge. Leave one for me though. I'm going to have three one. Okay. <laughs> See we where, when are we going to be back? Oh, oh half, half an hour. An hour. Right. Oh, our boat looks nice. Your boat looks nice from here. Is this all we do? We paddle at this rate? No. no. Well. Zoom, zoom. Let's say the massive boat's gone from here. Oh, oh it's yeah. two. Right.
Did you have to tell them that we're leaving? <laughs> I suggest you go for a little bit of a scoot around so you get used to the boat. Go. What, here now? Yeah, yeah let's go for we go. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I meet a boat coming in, it's port to port. Yeah. <laughs> You're holding on, Renee. Well, she's getting a bit excited here. <laughs> So are we going to call that mission successful or? I think so. I think so, eh? We didn't kill each other. And did we get on the plane? Uh, yes. Just. We did. So Just. it needs me in the front. We can't have two of us in the back. No. We're here oh, and we're going now? shopping. What have you got? We've got two lots of meters, stainless steel chain, two lots of 1.5 to replace this, the thing on the tender for lifting it. Yeah. And I got the fittings back at the boat, and this is a really good system for cleaning the boat. It's an extendable handle. Yes, yeah. And it extends right out, and you've got the nice brush on the end. And And so with everything ready to go, James Leishman, the sales rep that sold us the boat, and Doug Harlow, the representative for social media content for Nordhaven. And out we went just for one last sea trial. Essentially the concept was just pick up all the data points that they hadn't picked up yet. They still had some decibel readings to get. About 85 decibels was as loud as it got, and that was at full throttle down by the guest cabin, which is very, very close to the engine room and these are the first shots of Awanui in the water from off the boat. They took the dinghy out and uh, went around Awanui NZ getting some great shots. So really just a matter of going for a little bit of a joy ride, another gorgeous day and then it was really coming down to then the final prep to get her ready so that we could head down the Marama Sea through the Dardanelles, out into the Aegean Sea, and then down to Rhodos Island, which is a Greek island, to do the sign-over of ownership. And from there we'd be heading back into Turkish waters in order to get the bimini made and the water maker fitted. But, you know, we're all getting pretty excited by the stage. It was time to head off, and things were about to happen. And in the next video, we get cleared out of Turkey and just make sure we've got everything we need for the 53-hour trip south.